We have been told it. We have said it. And most importantly, we have seen it. The it that I speak of is the adage that we have been told, that we have said, that we have seen, and that is what goes up must come down. It's true. Gravity always seems to have the final say. What goes up must come down. Why? It was just a week or so ago that we were informed of the space satellite that was about to re-enter the atmosphere and they weren't quite sure where it was going to land. What goes up must come down. Why, tomorrow evening I will call my mother like I faithfully do every single Sunday and in a very special way tomorrow to wish her a happy Mother's Day and no doubt in the course of our conversation she will remind me what she so oftentimes does. She says, you know, Steve, I'm getting shorter, I'm shrinking. (laughs) And she is. She's getting shorter. And so am I. Why, I used to be 6'4". Now I'm 6'3 and a two-thirds, or something like that. But it happens to all of us, huh? Whether we like it or not, our bodies remind us, unfortunately, every single day, what goes up will usually come down. And the Feast of the Ascension is about an upward movement. It's about Jesus being taken up into heaven to take his rightful place at the right hand of the Father. But, but this Feast of the Ascension gives us another direction. It's not just upward, and it's not based upon the law of gravity that what goes up must come down. No, the Feast of the Ascension is about this. What goes up then needs to go out. That's the direction of the ascension. When Jesus goes up, the disciples do what? They go out. They go out. They go out. Why, all of our readings from the Acts of the Apostles, from the Gospel, remind us that as they're standing there looking up into the sky, Luke tells us in the Acts of the Apostles today, why, as they're busy looking up, there is this why there this angel that comes and says, what are you standing there for? What are you looking up for? You know what to do. You know what the mission is. You know why now Jesus needs to ascend to his rightful place into heaven. It's because if he doesn't go, you're going to sit on your hands and you're going to sit on your feet and you're going to let Jesus do all the heavy lifting. So Jesus goes up so that the disciples and that you and I might go out. Go out, we are told, and preach the good news to every creature. What goes up then needs to go out. It's what this, it's what this feast is all about. It's, It's how the church continues to grow, how it continues to prosper, how the good news continues to be heard, even after Jesus is gone. And you and I see examples of this, see how Christians in our society today, each and every day, in very small and significant ways, even though they've had a loved one that has died and has gone, we believe, up into heaven, Yet, it is something about the person that has died and has gone before us that inspires those who are left behind to go out. Why, there's the young lady who for the past eight years, for the past eight years and tomorrow she'll do it again. Tomorrow she'll participate in the Susan G. Komen Run for a Cure. Why does she do it? Because she lost her mother and two of her sisters to breast cancer. And their deaths 
certainly left this huge void in her life. But what does she choose to do? She goes out. And not only does she go out, but she runs. She runs for one day a hoped-for cure for all of those women afflicted with breast cancer. There's the young couple, the parents of a son who was tragically, who was tragically taken from their lives because of another person choosing to text while driving. And so these parents who have experienced this void in their lives, the loss of their son, what have they done? Why, they've chosen each and every day since his death to be ambassadors who are constantly calling our legislators and who are constantly pleading with people to stop texting while you're driving. Just drive. And so that has become their mission because their son who has been taken up into heaven has inspired them to go out. And there's the countless athletes that we hear of in television who have had a child with one affliction or another and, of course, have established foundations in an effort to be able to continue to do the research, hopefully, again, that can bring about a cure. And I can give you and I countless examples of how that happens in our everyday life, those are examples of how a person, even though they are gone, inspire us here on earth, give us the courage and the energy and the vision and the wisdom and the good news that life always comes from death. But in order for that to happen, the Feast of the Ascension needs to take place, not just 2,000 plus years ago, but in order for life to come from death, there has to be the Feast of the Ascension that takes place in our hearts, in our lives, in our homes, in our schools, in our communities, in our world, every single day. And how will the Ascension happen? It happens quite simply by knowing what direction we need to head. Because what goes up calls you and I to go out.